Good morning to you and praise the Lord, praise the King of Kings, praise the Lord of Lords, praise the Eternal Father, wherever you are. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're carrying on well. And I am glad to be able to visit you and to speak with you at such a time as this. Now, today I needed us to speak about something quite interesting. I needed us to speak about friendship. Friends, and I'll begin by asking a question. Do you have a friend? I once time had a privilege of attending my cousin's wedding. And uh, while there, it was a... Uh, while the priest who was joining the wedding made a comment in one of the prayers that he was making, and he prayed and he said, may they grow old in the company of their friends. And at that moment, something gripped my heart. Growing old in the company of their friends. How sweet is that? He did not pray for riches. He did not pray for abundance. He did not pray for things that other people pray for. He prayed that they may grow old in the company of their friends. Now, how special is it to be in the company of friends? We will not be able to address this effectively and get a bearing on what to do in this life unless we check out the manual that God has given unto us, even the Bible. When we read the story of Jesus when he was ministering on the face of the earth, he called his 12 disciples and he called them unto himself and he taught them how to do ministry. He walked with them from place to place, demonstrating to them what ministry is. He raised the dead in their midst. And at some point he did send the 72. And he told them, behold, I give you power. And he gave them power. And they went out there and he did exploits. However, their time came in John 15, 15, where the Bible says that no longer I do call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. A time came when he looked back and he said, I have been ministering to them, I have been with them, but something needs to happen. I need to promote them from being servants and raise them up to a dimension of friendship. Because it is at that dimension of friendship where they can be able to gain access into certain things that I have within me. Friends, a real friend grants you access into who they are. Take a moment and think about it and ask yourself, do you have a friend, somebody who has given you access into who they are, access that even words of mouth cannot be able to fathom and cannot be able to demonstrate? There are so many other verses of scriptures in the Bible where you can be able to look back and get a picture. And what a wonderful picture do we get from the story of creation. God creates Adam. He creates Eve, and the Bible says they were in the garden. They were naked, and they were not ashamed. Think about that. Now, in that state of life, where they were naked and not ashamed, they were able to access stuff in the spirit. There are certain things that you will access in this life where unless you are a friend to somebody, and I'm tempted to say this, yes, the grace of God is available. Yes, the grace of God works. But the grace of God, I want to believe, it works in the context of friendship. And that is why Jesus would say, I call you friends. Adam and Eve, they were friends until the snake came talking to Eve. They were friends. And that's why they would live in a place of abundance, a place of unlimited provision, a place where God would come and talk to them in the evening. The Bible says that, and the voice of the Lord was heard moving in the garden. The voice of God would move to speak to them. Let's talk about the story of David and Jonathan. David, this young boy, he's a shepherd boy, he's out there doing his father's business. And then one time he's anointed. He is anointed to take over the kingship of Israel from Saul. Now the kingship has had a rightful heir, the name of Jonathan. But Jonathan, when he got to know that somebody was getting anointed to take over his place, 
He did not oppose, he did not fight, he stood with David. The Bible says, and they made a covenant, and the love between them was stronger than the love of a woman. There was a time David needed to go and see the king. And the Bible says that Jonathan removed his cloak and handed it over to David. He retook his sword and gave it over to David. Can you imagine somebody going for an interview to take over your job? And you remove your coat, you remove your shirt, you remove your trouser, or if you are you're wearing a skirt, you remove everything that you have and you hand it over to them so that they can go and qualify for a job that you are supposed to be doing. This is a kind of commitment that Jonathan had for David. And David had for Jonathan. And their friendship was so strong. It was so strong that even years after Jonathan died on Mount Gilboa, David sat in his palace one day and he asked himself, is there anybody left of the house of Jonathan that I may show them favor? Now, real friendship will transcend even generations. You will go beyond the person you are relating to into their children, into their children's children. He said, wherever he is, whoever he is, bring him in. He was told, yes, there is somebody, he's a cripple, Mephibosheth, he's in um, Lodeba. He said, bring him in. He has to sit at my table. And Mephibosheth sat at the king's table for the rest of his life. He got married, he got kids. His farms that he used to have were being found by Ziba, the sons of Ziba, and produce was being brought. And he lived with the king because of his father. And I'm asking you again, do you have friends? You know, we live in a generation where people who think they have friends, today we are friends and tomorrow we are not friends, tomorrow we are not talking because you saw my quote-unquote nakedness. And instead of keeping quiet and going about and, and getting a garment and covering my nakedness, you went about, like that one son of Noah, went about and exposed my nakedness to the world. Are you really a friend? Have you been exposed before? Are those people who exposed you, did they have the spirit of a friendship? Think about it. The other aspect of real friendship is that gifts exchanged in this kind of relationships lasts most probably for a lifetime because it is not just a gift it was given and the giver backed it with life how do i say this have you ever noticed that there are some things that were given by people that even many years later they are still there why because the giver of that gift gave with their heart inside I want to give an example and say, I come back, most probably you can be able to notice that I'm wearing the same t-shirt that I wore the other day. And um, just a short testimony. A friend of mine flew to one of the cities in China. Now we know about Wuhan because it's a virus that came in from there. We know about um, Guangzhou because we've been doing business with Guangzhou. For those who are doing electronics, we know about Shenzhen. But there is one city called Chengdu in China. And when my friend arrived there, they called me from there and they said, Moses, what is your size? And at that time, I did not know the kind of size I wear. And I told them, listen, just buy whatever it is that you can be able to buy. And they brought me gifts. One of those gifts is a t-shirt that I'm wearing today. That was in 1990, 2007, sorry. That was 2007. So the t-shirt that I'm wearing today, I have been wearing it for the last 13 years. It has no signs of wearing. And I choose to believe it is because whoever gave it, they gave it and backed it up with life. And I want to ask you, do you still have a friend? Can you check back in your record of the people that you call friends and find out if you've ever given to them something that has lasted because it was backed up with life? Have you given? Have you been given? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Determine from this day that the kind of friends that you will make are quality friends. You will love them with one heart. Like David loved Jonathan and Jonathan loved David with one heart. There was a time Jonathan, David was running away from the King Saul and while he was in Ziklag, a band of men, warriors, there were 337,100 men gathered around him. And there was a question, do you come to me in peace? Because if not, may God judge between me and you. And the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came, be, came upon Amasai, 
And when the spirit came upon Amasai, he began to prophesy. And he said, we are yours, O David, the son of Jesse. The spirit of the Lord was upon him. We are yours. We are committed to you. They were committed. 337,100 men were committed to one man. And the one man was committed to them. I do not know what followed. The Bible says, and they ate three days because David had prepared for them. Now, how do you prepare food for 337,100 men? Except that there is something supernatural that is happening to that food because of the quality of friendship that you have. Brethren, I submit to you, things exchanged in this dimension of friendship, they never end. Because the life of God is within them. The power of God is within them. The glory of God is within them. We look at Elijah. He is at Kerith Ravine. And the river dries. And the raven no longer brings food. And God speaks to him and he says, I have prepared a widow for you in Zarephath. And Elijah left. And he went to Zarephath. And once he got to Zarephath at the gate, there was a woman who was collecting firewood. How did he know which widow was which one? except by the Spirit of God. And he got to her and he told her, listen, I need something to drink. And as she turned to go, he said, wait a minute, I need something to eat. And she said, I have a little unga in my, in my, in my, in, at home and I have a little oil, which I am going to cook and eat with my son and then we die. And Elijah said, listen, cook for me first. Because thus says the Lord, he continued to prophesy. And I choose to believe it is because of commitment between Elijah and this widow woman that caused there to be a, a, an eternal supply of food for them for three and a half years. She was a poor widow. And as a poor widow, I don't expect her to be living in a three-bedroomed house. And there is no record that Elijah left that house to go anywhere else to go and spend the night. But you know what? They enjoyed the kind of friendship that David and Jonathan enjoyed. And because of that, the thing that they were sharing between them did not end. That was Bible times. When you look at it these days, you will hear stories of, oh, you know, when a child is born, they have their own provision. God makes a provision for them. But I want to submit to you that it is not that they come with their plate. It is the love that you have for those children that causes the supernatural to move so that that which was enough for you can be enough for you and for them and whatever other person that depends to you depends on you some of us are not working the way we work and not making the kind of money we make to make, we make today because we are smart it is because of the kind of love and the bond that we have with children that god has given us now what kind of friendship what kind of people which people should you start in making them Deep friends, not just friends, but deep friends. People number one are the people who brought you onto the face of the earth. People who cooperated with God to have you born. Your mother and your father. If you are not a friend to both of them, I'm sorry to say, whatever it is that you have cannot multiply. Whatever it is that you have cannot increase. The Bible says that he that curses his father or his mother, his light shall be switched off in deep darkness. Don't just honor your father and your mother. Are you a friend to them? Are you a friend of your mother? Are you a friend of your father? Yes, he may have done stuff that he may have done. But he is your father. She may have done things that you, you know, weird things. But you know what? She is your mother. You're not going to get another mother. You better determine in your heart. Because I have something in my hand and I need it never to end. I am going to make them friends. For those who are married, you need to have to be a friend with your spouse. You need to be a friend with your wife. You need to be a friend with your... You're not just married, but friends. Deep friends. Deep friends who, not, who never argue about stupid things. Deep friends who are committed to one another. Deep friends. Deep, deep friends. You need to be friends with your children. If you have children. You need to get to a place where when children, your own children see you, they don't see a monster. They see a father, they see a mother, they see a deep friend. Somebody they can share their life with. Are there people in your life who have been a blessing to you? Are there people in your life that God has sent your way? 
You need to find them. You need to commit to them. You need to be with them. You need to stand with them and make them deep friends. I remember one time, my younger brother broke his leg at the thigh bone. And he was shipped from another county and was brought to where I am, County 001. And he was admitted at a private hospital, at, 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 at a public hospital. And while there at a public hospital, I went visiting the following day. And when I went visiting the following day, I found that he had come with a certain gentleman who, in my estimates, was at the time in his late 40s. Meaning this gentleman had a family back home and he left his wife, he left his children, he left his family and traveled hundreds of kilometers carrying my brother. He did not know me. When I met him and we managed to move my, uh, my brother from, from a public hospital to a private hospital for treatment, uh, we were finishing the process at about 7.30 p.m. And I told him, let's go out, let's have a meal, let's go home, let's freshen up because, I mean, it's been hard. And he looked at me in the eye and he said, you know what, I am not going to leave that young man here alone. And with that he left and went back to the hospital. Now at the hospital my brother was admitted for six days. And in the six days this gentleman would take a cushion of a seat. He would put it on the floor, put his head, the rest of his body on the floor and he slept on the floor for six good days because of my younger brother. Upon discharge, the bill was, you know, high through the roof and I did not have all the money so I had to, you know, ask a few people to help me. And in the process at some point I sat in the hospital ward and I told my brother, now everybody has given and you need to give something, how much do you have? And my brother said, I have 4,000 shillings and I told him, okay, fine, bring 1,000 shillings. This gentleman went into his spoken and he said, I have, I don't know, he said he has 350 shillings. I told him, okay, fine, you can give the 350 shillings. And he gave. And before the day ended, my brother was discharged. We went home, and a time came when this gentleman was supposed now to travel back home. And I looked at him and I told him, listen, you have done for my younger brother what I could not be able to do for him. Now I am going to give you what I carry. I looked at him, and I prayed for him, and I prayed for his children, I prayed for his descendants. Eight, seven, eight years down the line, I got a report that two of his children have been sponsored by wings that fly for education, university education. He doesn't have to pay anything for them. He doesn't have to pay a dime for them. The investment that he made at the time is still talking for him. He's still speaking for him. So what is it that you're doing for the people that you call friends that will speak for you in this generation and in the next generation? Will speak for your children. Will speak for your children's children. Can your children rise up and say, he was a friend of our father and now we're going to take over his children and become friends with them. Brethren, I pray for you as I pray for myself that I will find a friend who will be a friend, a deep friend that between us the supernatural will manifest and that which the world says is not enough, it will be enough for us and enough to be shared among the people around us. Now having said that, I want you to know that there are two kinds of friends. Those that the Lord has sent and those that the enemy has sent. And how do you know whom the Lord has sent? You need to understand your calling. You need to understand why you are born. Most of us don't. But it's a good place to start the journey and say, I need to understand why, 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 why was I born? Was I just born to go to work? Was I just born to go and, and attend to matter A and matter B and go to court if I'm a lawyer and, and, and do ABC if I'm a farmer, you know, go farming or teach if I'm a teacher? What, is that the reason why I was born? Now, when you discover that, you will know that those people who are aligned towards your vision, they are the people God has sent for your support. Now, Jesus knew he was born. And the reason why he was born was to die on the cross so that he can redeem us. But in Matthew 7, 16, I think 16 or 18, there about, he asked his disciples, whom do, you, do people say that I am? And Peter says, uh, uh, you, are, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus looks at him and he says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. A few verses down the line, he looks at Peter because Peter told him, far be it that this thing of going to the cross should happen to you. He looks at Peter and tells him, get behind me, Satan. For you don't have in your heart the things of God, but the things of men. The kind of friends that you have, do they have within their heart the things of God or they have within their heart the things of men? He stood with him. 
But at that moment, Peter was a devil. Peter was a devil. Now, some people have been sent for us. Some people have not been sent for us. Now we pray, and those who have been sent for us will come for us. And those who have not been sent to us, they will not come to us. They will not come to us. A real friend will not deceive you. A real friend will be there for you. First Kings 13, a man of God, by the word of the Lord, goes to Bethel. And he finds Jeroboam offering a sacrifice. He does not talk to Jeroboam. He speaks to the altar and he says, Oh, altar, hear the word of the Lord. And after prophesying by the word of the Lord, he left the place. He did not even go through the route that he came with because the word of God had told him, God had told him, like, Listen, don't eat nothing, don't greet nobody, don't say nothing, just go prophesy and get out. He left, he sat under a tree, but an old prophet was told by his sons what the other prophet had been told. And he followed. He said, saddle for me a donkey. I'm going to look for him. And he followed. And he went and he told him, are you the man of God who prophesied? Yes, I'm the man of God who prophesied. And he told him, listen, the angel has appeared to me. And the angel has said, come back that you may eat and drink. Now this man, although he was a senior prophet, the angel did not speak to him. He was lying. And he went home to this old prophet, and he ate and drank, and after he had eaten and drank, the real word of the Lord came, and he told him, listen, because you have contravened what the Lord had told you, you will not get to your land. You will die. Now, why would an old prophet lie to a young prophet? After he picked up his bodies, he said to his sons, please, when I die, bury me in the same grave that you buried the man of God. Because he had heard the prophecy that years down the line, Josiah would be born. And Josiah would, would burn the bones of the prophet. So because he did not want his, bone, his bones burned alongside with the other prophets, it was a question of self-preservation. He said, bury me together with the prophet. Bury me. So for selfish reasons, he went on and lied to a younger prophet. I submit to you, if it happened in the days of the Bible, that an old prophet lied to a younger prophet and told him things for his personal interest. I can assure you, there's nothing new under the sun. It's still happening today. And it will take the spirit of the living God for you to know which prophet is saying what, who is speaking the right things, the heart of God. Not everybody who is saying an angel spoke to me, the, the Lord spoke to me, is actually speaking for God. So may the Lord grant you revelation. Now, that is the religious side. There is also the government side. Years later, Jeroboam's son is sick, Abijah. And he tells his wife, disguise yourself and go to Ahijah, the prophet. He will tell you what will become of our son. Because he's a man who prophesied about my, my, my enthronement. And the woman, and, you know, she, she changed her dressing and she covered her face and she went. However, by the time she got to the threshold of the door, of Abijah the prophet, God had spoken to him and he told him, look, the wife of Jeroboam is on the way and when she comes, you shall tell her thus and thus. The Lord had revealed to him that somebody in the government, somebody in the government of the day was deceiving him. We have seen the prophets lying. Now we are seeing somebody in the government of that day lying. Brethren, not every news is news both from prophets and from the government. You better believe God. And you better believe God to discern the spirit of those that are called friends in your life. The same, same way Elijah was able to discern that this widow is the one the Lord has prepared. This is the widow. And the widow deep inside her spirit, she knew this is the man that God has prepared. You better have that discernment. They may not look the part at the beginning, but can I tell you something? They carry your tomorrow. They carry your destiny. They carry your tomorrow. Better be with them. Stand with them. Fight for them. God speaks to Abraham and he tells him, he tells him, leave your people and go into a land that I will show you. And Abraham left. And the Bible says, and Lot went with him. Abraham had a nephew. <laughs> <laughs> they were friends. 
They were friends. They went together because they were friends. They went together because they were friends. He did not carry any other nephew. He carried this guy, Lot, because he was his friend. And they went, and they went, and for 25 years, despite the fact that God didn't even utter a word, they became multiple, they became multi-billionaires, they became prosperous. Too prosperous that their servants began fighting. They even got servants. They started fighting among themselves. And a time came when God said, when, 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 when Abraham said, look, we don't have to fight with your friends. We are brethren. Why not, you know, choose the way you want to go. If you go to the east, I'm going to go to the west. If you go to the north, I'm going to go to the south. But whatever decision you make, we cannot go continue living together. And Lord decided, I'm going this way. And Abraham raised his eyes and God spoke to him again. Years later, Sodom is captured. And after Sodom is captured, Abraham decides, they have captured my friend. He armed his band of warriors, 318 men of his own household, men he had trained to go and rescue his friend. That is what you do for a friend. You hear your friend is in trouble, you arm your soldiers. And you say, I don't care what is going to happen. I am going to fight for my friend. He went, he fought, he conquered, he recovered everything. He brought them back. As if that was not enough, the angel came. Years later, stood at his entrance. There were three of them and Abraham saw them and he brought them in and he had the meal prepared for them. And as he was preparing a meal for them, one of them said to himself, shall, shall, shall we not tell Abraham, our friend, what we are about to do to Sodom? And when Abraham was told, he stood on a mountain and he started to intercede. What if there are 50 righteous? What if there are 45 righteous? What if there are 30 righteous? What will you still destroy the righteous with the unrighteous? And he interceded. He was praying for his friend Lot. And he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed until the end. That is what you do for a friend. You hear they are about to get into trouble. You stand with them. You pray for them. You don't even go announce, announcing to them that, oh, you know, my friend, I've been praying for you. I've been, I'll keep you in prayers. I've been praying. Those are not friends. When you hear somebody saying, I'm praying for you, <laughs> think twice. Real people who are praying for you will not go announcing to you. You know, the other day I was praying for you and the Lord spoke to me and said, oh, you know, you know, you see, I've been praying for you. Abraham did not even tell Lot that he was praying for him. Long story short, Lot was rescued. He was not destroyed together with everybody who was getting destroyed. Abraham's prayers were answered. And he left and went. He was not the only one who had a friend. Job had how many friends? Three of them. And when they heard that their friend was in trouble, they each left their place. Step number one. They traveled a distance. Step number two. And when they saw Job afar off, and when they saw the kind of problems that he was going through, the Bible says, they each tore their garments. And they came and they sat where Job was sitting. And for seven days, they said nothing. They were mourning with him. Now that is what friends do. That is what friends do. That is what friends do. When they hear a friend is in trouble, they leave what they are doing and they travel far. They leave their people. They leave their kindred. They leave their jobs. They leave their property. And they go and sit with their friends at the place of challenge until those friends come out. Chapter 42 of Job. And the Bible says, and God prospered, prospered. And God prospered the friends of Lot, because the friends of Job, because Job prayed for his friends. So when he started to come up, when he started to prosper, he did not prosper alone. He did not prosper alone. His friends too came up with them. That is what friends do. You are with me when I am down. When I am getting up, I am not leaving you behind. We are going together. We are going together. We are going together. We are going together. And that is why I believe Jesus would tell his disciples, now you are my friends. Because he knew someday, someday will come. That when he appears in the cloud, those that are dead will come up. And those that are living will join up and meet him in the air. Because that is the portion of friends. 
if I move from this dimension into another dimension, I am not leaving you behind. If I come up out of the grave and go up and sit at the right hand of the Father, Ephesians said that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work within us. And the Bible says in chapter 2 of Ephesians, For he has raised us up together with him and has made us sit together with him in the heavenly places at the right hand of the Father, a place that is far above every rule, authority, power, and dominion. And with us is a name that is above every name, both in this age and in the age to come. That dimension is accessible to us because Jesus has made us My brother, I invite you to be a friend. Number one, with Jesus. If you're not born again, you need to get born again. Become a friend with Jesus. Become a friend with our Lord. Become a friend with Him. Become a friend with our Savior. That just as He rose from the dead, you two are rising from, you cannot, death cannot hold you captive. He was not sick at any given time. It is your portion of immortality. In the name of Jesus, let immortality, the same dimension he lived in, the same dimension we are walking because he has called us friends. He walked about, healed the sick, raised the dead. There was something that was operating in him. It begins to operate with you. You're not working miracles until his compassion is within you for the people. You are not raising the dead until the compassion he had, the same dimension of compassion, is also at work within you. You're not going to work miracles like he worked miracles. You're not going to defy the elements of nature until he who, until who he is, is one with you. Make a prayer today that just as you are, just as he is in the heavens, So are we in the earth. Just as he is in the heavens. So are we in the earth. Just as he is in the heavens. So are we on the earth. While he walked on the earth. He conquered sickness, diseases. He conquered the death and the grave. And because he is and he is our friend. We conquer sickness and disease. We conquer death and the grave. Now my brother, my sister. Sickness and disease is not just limited to HIV and AIDS. It's not just limited to cancer. It's not just limited to to, to, to other sickness and diseases. Even the current pandemic that we are facing today, COVID-19, is also included. Is also included. The price has been paid. But how we are going to access it is because Jesus has become our friend. And Jesus is that friend that sticks closer to us than a brother. And therefore, by virtue of this revelation, I announce to you, we are more than conquerors. Today, we overcome. 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 As you watch this message and as you share this message with your friend, today, we overcome. Today, we overcome. By the blood of Jesus, today, we overcome. Today, we overcome. Today, we overcome. Not just on our behalf, but on behalf of those we call our loved ones, our parents, our spouses, our children. Today, we overcome. I say, today, we overcome. In the name of our friend, Yeshua HaMashiach, today, we overcome. In the name of our friend, Yeshua HaMashiach, today we overcome. We overcome every sickness and disease. Today we overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every relationship that matters, that has not been in order, relationship with a father, relationship with a mother, relationship with a spouse, relationship with a child, relationship with a boss, relationship with somebody that is not in order. It was a relationship ordained of God. Power cannot move. The grace of God cannot move in your life until such relationships are in order. The Bible says that have peace with all men. Be at peace with all men. Be at peace with God. Be at peace with all men. Because thereby good shall come. 
And therefore we pray for those relationships that they shall be repaired. Let them be repaired today. 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 Those that are broken of parents, let there be a recovery in the name of Jesus. There is people who are watching me that your mother is, doesn't like you. She, 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 just, she just doesn't like you. I pray. That in the name of our greatest friend, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that her heart is going to be worked on and she, from today, becomes your friend. I pray for your father, that from today, he becomes your friend. I pray for your children, that from today, they will not have a different spirit. They will be your friends. I pray even for your neighbors, that their hearts are going to be turned. Those people who borrowed you money and refused to pay back, I pray for them, that their hearts are going to be turned. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a new day. This is a new season. This is a new day. This is a new season. Yes, the economy has become what it had become. But I tell you the truth, there is a way out. There is a way out. By virtue of the relationship, the friendship that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ, by virtue of the relationship and the friendship we have with our mothers, by virtue of the relationship and the friendship we have with our fathers, by virtue of relationship and the friendship we have with our husbands and our wives and our children and people that matter in our lives, supernatural provision, supernatural abundance, we will never know lack at any given time of our life. In the name of Jesus. So determine from this day that I have this one friend that I can be quote unquote naked. I can tell them anything without fear, without shame. I can share with them the deepest part of who I am and I know they will not betray me. Determine to have that one friend. If you are privileged to have two, three, four, five of those kind of friends, teach them on how to be friends with their friends. And the grace of God multiplies. The purposes of the enemy, just like he came in the Garden of Aden, is to deceive and to lie and to tell you, listen, I had so and so said, just like he said in the Garden of Aden, did God really say? Did God really say? Did he say? And so the question comes, who has been whispering to your ear? What is their agenda? Their agenda is to separate you from the friends God has sent you away. And because now we have discovered them, we say, Lord, deliver us. Deliver us from the kind of people who bring separation and disconnection. From people that God has sent to us to be our friends. From this day, I shut my ears. I will not listen to something that is not anointed from heaven for my friends. Because I know that friend is connected to me just like my fingers are connected to me. And there is a life loss. Life loss. Yes, I can cut my hand off. But I will be minus one hand. <laughs> I can be minus one hand. Yeah, I can be minus one hand. And that's not something, a situation in life that I want to go in. So determine in your life. Determine from today that I will be a quality friend to my friends. That I will have quality friends in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that as you start this journey, the grace of God will be, is going to be with you. Those of us, of us who are struggling financially, I pray that the grace of God will make that which is available multiply. For your sake. The little that is there in your bank account, the little that is there in your kitchen, in your fridge, the little resource that you have, because you are a friend and you have friends, the supernatural power of God that multiplies stuff, it will cause there to be a multiplication. Let us start this journey together. Let us also not forget our counties where we are coming from. Bible says that pray for the city where you are in. Because if that city prospers, you too who is in there will also prosper. Our counties are under siege, businesses have closed. But we pray today. 
We pray today because together with my viewer, we are friends and you also have friends. And by the virtue of the friendship that we have with our friends, we pray for our counties where we come from, from 001 to 047, each one of them, that they will not suffer diseases and sicknesses. They will not suffer. There were 5,000 men on the hill. And not everybody there believed in what Jesus was doing. Yes, maybe the 12 disciples were. But out of the 5,000, not everybody believed. But I can assure you, when they started to share the bread, everybody ate the bread Jesus multiplied. And therefore, because there's going to be a multiplication in your life and in my life and the life of our friends, we want to make sure that everybody in our account is partaking of the grace and the multiplication that God is bringing in our lives. And by virtue of that friendship, we pray that every business that has been going down, that business is going to receive life today. That business is going to multiply from today. In the name of Jesus Christ, new avenues to earn will open up today. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sicknesses and diseases that have been ravaging our counties, from this day they come to an end. We pray the supernatural power of God, where he says that once I shut a door, nobody can open. Today we agree with the heavens that the movement of this virus that has been sneaking around estates, we shut it out in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, that this disease will not move around our towns. This disease will not move around in our villages. This disease will not move around our people. We put an embargo and say enough is enough. There must be a recovery from this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, a day of new beginning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. From whatever you've been watching from, I pray that you'll be able to share this video with your friends. And they shall be blessed just as you have been blessed. Take it upon yourself and determine to start this journey. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you.